In September of 2023, my brother and I sailed blown away from Baltimore, Maryland to Hampton, Virginia. It was an unseasonably warm week, and we were glad for the air conditioning at our first marina stop in Solomons. When we flipped the switch in Deltaville the next evening, however, all we got was a cryptic message on the display and no air. At that point, I knew nothing at all about air conditioning. Must be the compressor, I thought, as we winterized the boat in Hampton, Virginia, on a day that definitely deserved some AC, I began to investigate. I found this unit in the lazarette of the cockpit and this unit under the V-berth. Which one is the air conditioner? I searched online for these manufacturers and model numbers, but found little useful information. As I read about air conditioning online, the fog gradually lifted. Both of these units are the air conditioner. The compressor and high pressure components were in the lazarette and the air handler was under the V-berth. What I came to understand is this. As the compressor spins, it pressurizes the coolant, causing it to heat up. Water is circulated around the coils to carry some of the heat away. The pressure is released, and as the coolant expands, it becomes cold. A fan blows across the cold coils, forcing cool air into the cabin. There are also access ports for the low-pressure side and the high-pressure side. Coolant is generally added through the low-pressure port. A variety of sensors monitor temperature and pressure. Many of these have the authority to shut down the whole system if parameters get too far outside of specs. These might include low and high pressure sensors, compression side sensors, airflow, and cabin temperature, among others. I used to wonder why some boats at the marina always had a constant flow of water coming out of a through hull, often near the stern of the boat. That was outflow of cooling water from a functioning AC system. Water flow issues might cause overheating and subsequent shutdown. This could be caused by obstructing debris anywhere between the intake through hole, the raw water strainer, or the outflow through hole. The circulation pump that moves the water through the system can also fail. Problems on the blower side might include icing of the coil, limited airflow due to a very dirty air filter, or something pressing on and constricting one of the flexible air ducts. The fan motor or the switch that activates it can fail as well. Of course, the compressor itself can wear out, but it is much, much more likely that the issue is with one of these other components. I continued gathering information before we left the boat in September. The real key to the puzzle was figuring out what ASF meant. That became possible once I knew the control unit was a passport I.O. I kept notes as I learned about the various components of my system. Gradually, the pieces came together. It was late October when the nut cracked completely. I learned that ASF was air sensor fault, which meant the cabin air temperature sensor was not working. I was puzzled for a bit as to where that sensor might be, but the passport documentation told me it was part of the control unit. I ordered a new control unit with a plan to install it when we went back to the boat in February to start prepping it for a trip down the Atlantic ICW in March. My wife and daughter were going to be a part of that trip, so I felt a certain amount of pressure to get the boat heat and AC working. Turn the unit on. Ooh, we're in business. It shows it's 52 degrees in here. The old one, you just push from the back, it pops off. It's attached with some tape. Just, just press the old one in, the new one in. Plug the cable in the back, and that is all there is to it. Close that up. AC. 
back on. Air conditioner, heater on. Cycles here. Turn it on. It shows the temperature. It's cold. It's set to 72 in here, but it's actually 55. And then we should hear that. Yep, and there it goes. You can hear the heater coming on. September had been unseasonably warm. Paradoxically, March was unseasonably cold. Anchoring out brought back memories of backpacking in the mountains of Colorado and Wyoming, where you would often wake up with a frozen water bottle. We were very grateful for boat heat when we plugged in at a marina every third or fourth night of the trip.